In the next few videos, we will be creating a contact application using some of the basics of Backendless, which is the mobile backend as a service platform. So I want you to go to this website, go to bit.ly and then go to forward slash Backendless Training. You'll get to this website where I'll, where I'll place a few documents that we will use in the videos. For example, set up Backendless in Android Studio, the coding that you'll need for that, basic coding for the Backendless user service, uh, the progress bar example, m the picture that we will use and so forth. So everything you, that you'll see in the videos when I refer to some documentation, you'll find the documentation on this website. So make sure that you go to this website and get the documentation as we progress through the videos. Right, so let's start creating this app. Basically what I did is to just create a new contacts app. Uh, so it's called contacts 2018. And inside of this application, you will see that I created a few files. So we've got the main activity and the main activity or main underscore activity XML, both of these files, when you create a new blank application, you will have them both. And I've changed nothing at all in any one of these two. What I did do was to create a new application class. So you're going to say right click on your, your folder there, and you're going to say new and then Java class to create this application class. So you'll see that I've got an extra application class. And remember that I've done this video already to help you set up uh, the backendless SDK. So you can just go and follow that video. So just to, to run through the steps quickly again, in your application class is where you'll have these three variables defined, and we'll get these from the website now. And then you've got your server URL, and in the onCreate method, you've got these lines of coding to set up the URL and initialize your app to be able to use in backendless. These backendless calls will actually not work unless you go into your build.gradle file and you add this one line of implementation. So you'll get that also in the documentation. If we go back to the website, you remember this website that we talked about. You go to this website and you'll see the setup the backendless, setup backendless in Android Studio documentation where you can quickly have a look at that. So it looks basically, basically like this and you can copy and paste the coding from here. There's the implementation. This should be in the manifest and so forth. So go and have a look at, at that video again if you are having problems. So we have this implementation there. That's important. That's basically your first step. After that, you can go and create your application class. In your application class, we've got these lines copied and these lines copied and pasted from the document. Then if we go into our manifest file, you must have the user's permission in order to use the internet access to use Backendless. And then remember to add this one line there to say Android name should be pointing to your application class and that is the application class that we created and if you remember correctly this application class is the class that runs right at the beginning and it will also be the last class that exits your application so just make sure that you go to the uh, previous video again if you're having trouble setting up back endless for android studio Right, so this is basically everything is done except for my application ID and my API key. So let's just quickly go and refresh what we need or where we need to get these two values. Uh, if I go to my website quickly again, and where I've logged into Backendless, uh, we had uh, the test app to set up everything in the previous video. So what I want to do now is to create a new app, and I'm going to call this app Contacts, and just say Create. Right, and then we'll have a new contacts application. And in this application, I can check, check my application ID there. So I'm going to copy my application ID, go back to Android Studio, and that will be my application ID in double quotation marks. If I go back to that website again, you'll also see there's the Android API key. I'm going to copy that API key, and I'm going to set it up as my API key. And now, basically, uh, back English should be able to work and everything should be fine. Now, the first part of our contacts application is to do the login section. So for this video, we're basically just going to set up everything so that we can start with the next video on the coding uh, for, for this contacts application. So firstly, I want to talk about, uh, and you'll see in, in the Word documents that you can download. Let me just go to another one there. I've got a progress bar um, Word document on that website. So if you go back to the website, you'll remember this uh, basic 
coding and so forth, you get the progress bar example there. So I'm referring to that Word document now. And on that Word document, you'll see there's a layout file and where I've got a progress bar inside of it. And then there's some coding on how to handle that progress bar. So we want to quickly set up this part so that we have a progress bar on every, every activity where we want to actually show the progress bar. So I'm going to go back to Android Studio. And we're going to create another two activities. So you're going to go to New. You're going to go to Activity. And you're going to say Empty Activity. And let's call this activity the login activity. So I'm going to leave it as activity login. It will not be the launcher. Or let's make it the launcher activity. Uh, we'll see in the manifest how it uh, basically generates that file for us. So this will be the first activity where we start. That will be our login activity and our launcher activity. And let's say finish. Now after your login activity is done, let's just go to the manifest file quickly and see that our main activity is in fact still the main and the launcher activity. So I'm going to remove that intent filter there uh, just to make sure that our main activity is not the main one that will launch, which means our login activity will now be the main one and the one that will launch. So we'll come back to the main activity and we will use it again. I'm going to close down my application class, my main activity and my main activity XML file. Right, so we've got, uh, let's close down the manifest as well. We've got the login activity with its XML file. So what we want to do also is to create a new, uh, let's go with activity again, empty activity, and I want to call this one register. So we're going to have a registration activity where the user can register his account. And then if he's done registering his account, he can go and log in using the login activity. Right, so uh, we're going to work in both of these now. So in your register activity is obviously the first thing that a user needs to do. It needs to register an account. And after registering the account, we will go back to the login activity where he will be able to log in. So my application, remember, will start with my login activity. And in the login activity, we'll have a button that goes to register. So uh, in the login activity, let's go to the XML quickly for login. Uh, you'll see it's a constraint layout. I want to change that to a linear layout so you can just change that to a linear layout and let's set the orientation to be vertical now uh, actually i want to just take uh, the layout from here so actually you could have uh, just skipped that part uh, just let's just copy the whole layout from here so we're going to take this progress bar layout and we're going to copy it to this layout that says activity login so let's just paste it there and uh, right at the top, let's just remove this part there so that you won't have any errors. And I think I still have the linear layout, an extra one at the bottom. Let me just check. Uh, this linear layout closes there. Yes, so this one is an extra one. So just make sure that your layout now looks like this. So we basically just copied it from here. And you can see it's referring to the main activity here. And it should be referring to the login activity as the context for this file. Right, so we're in the login activity login file. Uh, the orientation is, is vertical. We've got a progress bar with the ID login progress. We've got a text view that says TV load. And then we've got our base linear layout. So let me just quickly talk about this progress bar. Basically, we're adding this progress bar and a text view there. And you can see that I've set them as gone and gone. So if you quickly change it to visible and visible, you'll, you'll see it in your design tab. So you, there you can see this is basically how it will look like. Okay, so that's the color. So if you want to change the color of this, you need to change your color scheme under your colors.xml. So we'll do that also now. Uh, so that's basically your accent color. And it says loading, please wait. So basically what this progress bar will be doing is that it will hide these con two components from your layout until you need it. So we will do the following right at the start. We will say, take away these two components, but only have my linear layout, which will now become my base layout. So everything inside of this linear layout is what we'll see in the screen. So we will design inside of this part. And you can see I gave it the ID login form. So my form will, be, will come there. And then when I want to show uh, your progress bar, I will hide or start showing the progress bar and the text view that says loading. 
and I will hide the linear layout that's that's the login form. So basically everything on your screen will then disappear and it will only show your progress bar. Now let's go to the login activity and see what we need to do there. If you go back to your Word document, this is the layout part. Inside of your activity, you need to have these three lines. So I'm going to copy them, go back to Android Studio, and I'll have them right at the top declared. Alt Enter for your imports. Uh, yes, it's the Android view there and the text view there. So there also will be just a nor normal text view. Then inside of your on create, we'll have the following where we just link to the three IDs. So we'll say login form view equals find the view by its ID. One is called login form, the other one is called login progress, and the other one was called TV load. So you can see the IDs, this one is login progress, TV load, and this one is login form. So we're basically just setting up and linking to them in coding. And then the last part that you need to copy is this whole part that gives you the method that will actually do everything for you. So let's just copy that method and we'll have that method underneath the onCreate. Okay, so there's a few things uh, that we need to import here. So we're going to say Alt Enter to in import, Alt Enter again to import there. For this one, Alt Enter to import the class. For that one, Alt Enter to import the class. And then everything should be fine. So the reason why I'm giving you this is because it's a lot of coding to type just in order to get this progress bar to work. So basically what happens here is uh, we, we create a method called show progress and you pass in a Boolean value. So if I want to show the progress bar, I'll pass in a true value. That true value will then start with the login form view. You can see if the value is true, it's going to be gone. But if the value is false, it will be visible. So if we send true to the show progress method, the login form view will be gone, which means this linear layout where you've designed everything for your activity will be gone. And then what happens for the rest, the progress view, the progress bar will, if it's true, will be visible. If it's false, will be gone. And the, the text view that shows loading, if you pass in the true value, will be visible but if you pass in false, will be gone. And then the rest of these is just to set some animations. And you'll also see I've included this, although uh, my SDK in this case will always be greater than or equal 19. But if you're developing for an API less than 19, then you'll need this if statement. So that's why I've included it. So if your, your build version is greater than 19, you'll use this or greater than or equal to 19. But if it's less than 19, you'll just use this where you just set it visible or invisible. And that's basically it. So now if we go back to our login activity, this is now where we can start designing our activity. So just make sure that you've got uh, your layout like this. And we're going to do exactly the same layout for the register activity. So I'm going to copy this whole layout there for login. And you can see we've basically just got the progress bar and the text view on it. We'll start defining how it should look. Uh, so we're going to go into register, go into the text part, and replace the coding that you have there with this one. And now just change your context there to go to the register activity, and then the rest should be fine. So now we've got two layouts that looks exactly the same, and we will go and design them to look different than we've got it now. Okay, so now in the login activity, we had these three lines at the top. I'm going to copy it and I will have the same three lines at the top for my register activity. Also in my on create, I have those three lines. I will also have the same three lines there. Also in my login activity, I've got that whole method called show progress. I will copy that whole method and I'll have it after my register or after my on create. So basically, we've got the exact same thing for both activities now. Okay, so before we end with this video, just to, to get the progress bar up and running and uh, your activity, what we can do is to just quickly check out this progress. So let's say right at the beginning, I'm going to call show progress and I'm going to set the progress to true just to see if it, it's actually working. And I'm going to run this quickly and run it on that device. Right, so just make sure that you are in the login activity because that's the first one that should run 
and then uh, it will start showing the progress bar there. Set it to true. Okay, and there you can see the application running, and you can see it, it started showing the progress bar there. Uh, and, it, and it will basically just keep on running. So when we're logging in a new user or registering a user, and it takes some time to connect to backenders, this is what we'll show to the user. So let's just go and change our color scheme a bit. So remember for the color scheme, we will go to a website called materialpalette.com. And let's just choose uh, two or some colors there in order to, to do this application. So I'm going to go with, let's go with an orange and a deep orange, for example. So let's say that's our color scheme. I'm going to copy my dark primary color, go back to Android Studio, open up my colors XML, and there's your primary dark. I'm going to choose that as my primary color, primary dark. Go back, this is my primary color. Let's go back to Android Studio. So that is my primary color that I'm going to have there. And then it wants the accent color and the accent color is this dark one. So let's go back to Android Studio and that's my accent color. Now I want to also add another color property there and that will be my color light. So I'm going to say color primary light. And then the light color will be this one there and go back and I'll add the color there. So it's a whole new color scheme now. If we run this now, you will also see that uh, where we had the emulator run this pink accent color now, uh, the accent color should now be the dark orange or the deep orange. Right, and there you can see the accent color is now the deep orange and that now became our progress boss color as well. Okay, so uh, in my colors XML, make sure you set up your colors XML. Uh, we've got the progress bars up and running. We've got back endless setup. So just make sure that everything is fine. If you are having problems with uh, your XML file and it's not displaying as it should here, uh, I'm just going to force uh, the, to refresh this layout. And sometimes for some reason, everything's not appearing as it should. You can just force refresh your layout and then uh, also if you go into your styles XML, some people had a problem here where, they, where they're not actually seeing the action bar there. So if you're not seeing the action bar um, or you're not seeing anything at all here, what you can do is to change this, just add the word base there and dot, and that will change your, um, your theme to the base theme, which could probably help you there. So uh, just go and play around with it. In, on my Mac, I don't have any problems with that. Right, so we'll come back in the next video to start with our application. For now, we just had it. We just had to set up uh, the progress bar and so forth. You can see that my my layout is empty, even though I've got the, the progress bar and a load button there, or a load um, text view there. But I've hidden them, and whatever we will design, we will now do inside of this linear layout. And then when we show the progress bar and the text view, we will hide our linear layout.